Today we're gonna to talk about some table saw tips that will hopefully help you work on the table saw a little safer and get a little bit better results. But first, let's talk about a little history. The circular saw blade, something we use every day out in the shop, was actually invented by a woman in 1760s-ish and later patented by Samuel Miller in 1777. Tabitha Babbitt is a shaker woman who saw the men out doing the old over-under saw, cutting up some slabs. And seeing how hard they were working, she was actually inspired to invent what we now know as the modern day circular saw blade. So the first table saw wasn't available until 1885, at least not commercially. And it was only available in one catalog. That was MF and John Barnes and company and it was out of Rockford, Illinois. And guess what? You powered it with your foot. It was a treadle table saw. That's cool. So I get asked a lot about what saw blades I recommend, and I am not the person to ask for that. There are guys out there who know a lot more about saw blades than I do. I'm a minimalist when it comes to saw blades. I keep three saw blades in the shop for my table saw. I keep a 40 tooth for rough work for you know ripping down two by fours and that kind of stuff. I keep a 60 tooth in my blade 90% of the time. And then I also have an 80 tooth that I use for ripping or milling up expensive plywoods. But um, my Diablo is my go-to blade. Uh, not, not a promotion, I'm just saying this is a great blade. It's not the cheapest one out there, but it is far from the really expensive saw blades that you see out there on the market. Probably the biggest mistake most of us make is not keeping our blades sharp. We just run a blade till it's dull. But, but really the best option is to make sure that you keep your blade sharp and clean. Now this one is a really bad example. I've been cutting a lot of you know, yellow pine with a lot of pitch in it, so it's got some buildup, and I'm about to change my blade. Now, it goes without saying, and I know a lot of us forget to, but you really should unplug your table saw when you're changing the blade. Very important, just unplug it, it takes a half a second. When you install a new blade in your saw, the very first thing that you should do is plug it back in, step out of the plane of the blade, so you're off to the side, and turn it on. I've had some really expensive saw blades in the past dislodge teeth. Brand spanking new blades dislodge teeth right off the go. And you do not want to be anywhere near the plane of that blade if that happens. Now I've never had it happen with Diablo blade and I know it's a rare occurrence but I have talked to other woodworkers who have had the same thing happen. Always turn your blade on when you're outside of that plane to make sure that your teeth are all very secure on the blade. Now I know you guys have seen me do some really wild things with table saws, at least those of you who have been subscribed for a while. But I have a couple of rules that help keep me safe. First of all, if I can touch the blade with my thumb and the fence with my finger, I'm using a push stick or a push shoe. If it's more than that, I can keep my hand safely away from the blade, then I'll use my hand. Otherwise, that's my, that's my safety zone, that's what I do for myself. So let's talk about push sticks and push shoes. These are the two things that I keep right next to my table saw at all times. This is a push stick. This is what's co commonly referred to as a shoe. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see all over the internet is how people use their push sticks. Let me show you what I mean. It is natural for us to want to get everything as far away from the blade as possible. So when you're pushing a piece through with your push stick, it's not uncommon for people to put their push stick over here, but look what happens. Watch what happens when my push stick is on that side of that center line. And I'm not gonna do anything but do a natural push all the way through. You see what's happening to the wood? It's separating, it's pulling away. It's naturally gonna wanna push that leading edge away from the fence. So a better option is to keep your blade, your push stick away from the blade as much as you can, but to be on this half Another common mistake when it comes to table saws is to put a short edge up against the fence and push it through. That is asking for trouble. If you have to cut long pieces of material and short pieces off the end here, use a table saw sled or your T-square. Another common mistake when using the table saw is actually stopping the cut during the cutting process. So if you're cutting something and then you pause to reposition your hands or to grab your push shoe, what can happen is you can get burns. 
I don't know if you can see that. Typically this is gonna ha happen in harder material. You can get burns and where that burn is is actually a small divot in the material. You wanna complete the cut in one pass, keeping it at the same speed throughout the cut. That's gonna keep the pressure on the blade even throughout the cut, gonna give you the best quality cut that you can get. Yeah, no burns, baby. That being said, obviously safety is first. If you have to stop to reposition for a safer cut, stop. Your safety is not worth a clean cut. One more thing before we call this video quits is the riving knife. And so I like to make sure when I'm using my riving knife to keep it nice and clean, and I'll typically just clean it up with a bit of sandpaper and then wax it. I wanna be able to put a very flat piece of wood up against this side of my saw and have my riving knife just past that. So when I push on that, you'll see the riving knife move this way just a little bit. And I do mean just like less than five or six thousandths of an inch. So just adjust, just bend the riving knife a little bit so it's just to this side of the blade. So what that, ha what that does is in effectively create something of a feather board of sorts. So those are just a couple of tips that I use in my shop every day. Now, table saw safety is really important. And there's lots of great videos out there about table saw safety. So if you're just getting into the, the hobby and you bought yourself a table saw and want to learn more about it, look around. There's tons and tons of really good information out there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these tips. Now, if you have a comment or something to say about table saw safety or a tip, or maybe a little bit of history about the table saw, put it in the comment section below so people who are new to the industry or new to woodworking can go down there and read that. Who knows, maybe you'll save somebody's finger. That's always a good thing. You know, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. If you're not new here, you know I love you. You sexy beast.